Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're looking at Sardinia. This is an area control game with hand management, area movement and action retrieval. The game is for 2-4 to four players and takes around an hour to play. The game is designed by Stefan Dora and is published by Plate. Sardinia is the latest board game release from Plate in 2024. It is the new version of the previous game, Creta, with fresh and new artwork. The core gameplay remains identical. Worth to note that Creta came out in 2005 by the same game designer and was published by Gold Sieber Spiel. In Sardinia, the players take on the role of settlers during the 14th century on the island of Sardinia. The players take control of their priests, villagers and ships, where they need to construct villages and forts in order to gain influence in the different provinces. Let's dive into a side-by-side -side comparison of both games. I'll show you all of the components and the game boxes. Then I'll teach you how to play Sardinia. So these are all of the components and game boxes from both games. The list and number of components from both games are identical. Let's start out with the game boxes. Creta has a bigger box. Sardinia has a smaller box. And the game box transforms into the game board as well. Check this out. Here are the rule books from both games. These are the game boards from both games. Here are the fort cards. These are the character cards. Score markers. Priests and abbots. Ships. Forts. Villages. Villagers. Agriculture tokens. And summary cards. And that's all of the components and game boxes from both games. Now let me teach you how to play Sardinia, and I'll give you my final thoughts afterwards. Worth to note, the core gameplay remains identical. If you'd like to watch a tutorial on how to play with Creta instead, check out Undiscovered Games tutorial video, link in description. The players set up the game as displayed here. Everybody starts out the game with one set of 7 cards in their hand and all playing pieces in their supply. And that is all in their chosen player cutter. The game is played until 11 scoring rounds take place. The winner will be the player with the most victory points at the end of the game. There will be a main board displaying the island of Sardinia. And there will be 11 fort cards displayed next to the board. Two of which are face up and the rest are face down. This is an area control game where players need to have the right people and buildings at the right time in the right location in order, to, in order to, to score points for the current scoring round. All players have an identical set of cards, which consists of different characters which provide a different action. A player's turn consists of playing one of these cards, taking the action if applicable, that card gets discarded in front of the player and then it's the next player's turn in clockwise order. The character cards include the following. Admiral. Either add a ship onto a harbor, max two at each harbor or one in a two-player game. Or move one or both of your ships to another harbor location. Worth to note that you can't have both of your ships in the same harbor. Commander. Either add a villager to any province or move the villager or villagers with an allowance of up to 4 movement points. Priest Either add your priest to the board on any location or move your priest up to 3 movement points. 
farmer. Harvest an agriculture token on the board. In order to achieve this, the player needs to have a villager on the same spot as an agriculture token, along with their ship. The villagers can connect through a chain of villagers to get farther agriculture tokens. Each agriculture token you get, gets you a single point. If it's the same copy of a previous token that you already have, you gain an additional plus one. Second copy, plus two. All on top of the initial single point, etc. Architect. Build a fort or a village. A player needs to have one agriculture token first in order to construct. Then each other agriculture token you gain allows you to build again once more. You do not discard the agriculture token in this way. Queen. Copy a previously played character card that you have played and that's in front of you. Sentinel. Score the current fort card, leftmost card. Then the player reveals the next fort card in line and decides whether to discard it to the bottom of the fort deck or keep it in play. If the player decides to discard it to the bottom of the fort deck, then the player replaces it with a card from the top of the face down fort deck. Finally, all players take back all of their played character cards back into their hand. Notes Each province can hold up to 7 playing figures, priests, villagers or villages. A player can't move through or into another province containing another player's priest unless if they move their priest into that location first. Scoring Each fort card depicts a location on the board that would score the fort's surrounding provinces. Each province is scored separately. The player with the most influence gains the number of victory points depicted in the province. In a 3 or 4 player game, second place scores half rounded down. Ties award all tied players and skips the runner up of any. The player gains influence for each of the following. One influence for each of their priest, villager, ship, and neighboring fort. You gain two influence for each of your villages. After the 11th fourth, fourth card has been scored, the game ends and the player with the most victory points wins the game. Worth to note that Sardinia introduces an advanced variant titled Alternate Sentinel and Sentinel Rules. And that's how you play Sardinia. Sardinia is an area control game with hand management, area movement and action retrieval. The game is designed by the renowned game designer Stefan Dora and is illustrated by Wan Jin Gil and Jion Lee. The game is published by Plates. The theme and setting is pretty much pasted on. The, bo the board displays the island of Sardinia with characters settlers from the 14th century. The artwork looks outstanding. I really loved all, all the different illustrations and the use of colors for all of the components in this game, including the game box. The iconography used on the designated components was also very well done and easy to read. The components used were awesome. The game box itself was fantastic and transforms into the game board as well. The transforming box is one of the publisher's signature productions. The game cards were of good quality. The player pieces were fantastic wooden bits. The agriculture tokens were standard. The reference sheets were standard as well. All the components fit back in the box without any issue. And the box that was wrapped around with the game box was pretty stable. The gameplay is really solid. An excellent area control game that will have the players wanting for more. The game offers a straightforward and enjoyable playing experience accompanied by well-crafted strategic elements. The gameplay is pretty fast, turns are quick, and plays with all player count and plays well with all player counts. Each game will feature a unique set of forts that will be scored with a total of 26 fort cards included in the game. Words cannot express how happy I am because of this new version. 
I am in complete joy and so glad that this gem of a game resurfaced for new players to discover this hidden gem that's regarded as a cult classic title. I honestly am still in disbelief and just can't believe that it's finally here. With all the recent new versions and reprint type of older games, Sardinia Creta was an amazing game choice to publish once again. The game still holds up today and is an absolutely essential game in any game collection. Additionally, the small game box of Sardinia makes it very portable and an excellent choice for travel as well. What caught my attention the most is that this version Sardinia still captures the aesthetics of Creta with the board, the ponds, and the villages. The game board's layout is strikingly similar to that of Creta's, although in a much smaller form factor. I am so glad that the publisher decided to go with the pawns as well. Such a great throwback to old school gaming. I'm super glad to see older games coming back with newer versions. This is a must play game for all players who enjoy area control games. Now with this new version being available and affordable without resorting to scalpers and their outrageous pricings. Now gamers can finally rejoice with the latest release at last. Worth noting that the, that plates are currently working on a new version of Tonga Bonga, another game by Stefan Dora, and that might be available at Essen of this year, 2024. Now if only someone reprints or makes a new version of... Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Take care and until the next one. Peace.